Okay, so I'm going to try to offer a new perspective about the stroke that maybe some of you haven't thought about already. So here we go. Okay, so why shouldn't you pull with your arms and might be tempted to during the stroke? Uh, for some of you, it might be kind of obvious at first, but let's go ahead and take the time and think about it. Um, by the time that you finish this video, hopefully I'll be able to demonstrate some basic arthrokinematics as it applies to paddling, and I'll explain all that. And uh, learning that paddling is a primarily closed chain movement. So I know I threw out a lot of big words right there, right? No sweats. Let's just start with the basics first. All right, so let's look here first, all right? We're going to be looking at the elbow joint. And what I want to know is... If I'm doing a bicep curl, and I'm lifting this weight, which part of my arm is moving? This part or this part? Well, the answer is this part, right? Your forearm, when you do a bicep curl, is moving towards your arm so that you can impress the ladies, right? All right, so what about over here in this, in um, a push-up? In a push-up, your arm over here, the humerus, is moving towards the forearm, right? And push-ups are hard, so, you know, you're set. So the difference here is, or I guess the similarity is that even though they're both moving towards one another and the angle between the elbow is closing, one is considered an open chain movement and the other is considered a closed chain movement. Now, I'll explain the definition at first, but hopefully you're following so far, right? So in this case, the farther part of the joint was moving towards the closer part, and the closer part of the joint's moving towards the farther part. Let's look at the hip, for example, okay? Hip joint. So your hip joint it has two parts, the pelvis and the femur, basically, okay? So when this foot here is moving up towards the step, my leg, my thigh, is moving towards my uh, my torso. Okay? This is an open chain movement. When, now that my foot has landed on the step already, and I'm getting ready to transfer my weight from here over on top of my foot, the pelvis and the torso has to move over on top, so the pelvis is moving on the femur. This is a closed chain exercise, or movement, sorry. Okay, so here are some basics that you have to understand. Every joint, so elbow joint, shoulder joint, hip joint, pet neck, foot, ankle, whatever, every joint, is an articulation between two bony surfaces where one moves on the other, okay? So, in the open chain case, the distal part of the joint, meaning the part that's furthest away, was moving towards the, the proximal part. It was free to move. However, in the closed chain movement, the proximal joint, the proximal part of the joint, was moving towards the distal part. That was free to move. Make sense? Okay. So now that we got those basics out of the way, let's quickly look at a deadlift here. So if I were to look at a deadlift, what would you think it would be? An open chain or a closed chain if I was looking at the hip? So the answer is that it's a closed chain movement because when I'm approaching my lockout in the deadlift, my feet are in contact with the ground and it's my pelvis that is going to be moving on the femur. Okay, right? My, it's, it's kind of hard to conceptualize if you've never thought of this before, but like my leg, when it's kicking a ball, can be moving towards the pelvis but because it's in contact with the ground, in this case, it's the pelvis that's moving up towards the femur and opening that hip angle, okay? So deadlifts are 
flows chain movements. Okay. Well, does this look familiar to anyone? So if you turn it on its side, it's almost like you're sitting in a boat, right? Now I know it's not exact, but hear me out. If you're in a boat and your feet are fixed there, okay? And you know that you have to get some type of hip flexion, right? We're still looking at the hip. Something has to move, right? Either, either your leg is moving towards your body or your body's moving towards the leg. And in a dragon boat or in any boat for that matter, it's clear that your body is the one moving towards the leg. So your pelvis is moving on the femur. Okay? So kind of going through the rules and everything I explained to you first, then you might want to assume that paddling is a closed chain exercise. And that's a pretty safe assumption for the most part, right? But I want you to think about something else. Let's think about the movements of the arm during your recovery phrase. Okay? During your recovery, your arms are in the air, right? Let's say the water's down here, water's down here, water's down here. You haven't recovered and entered the water yet, right? But through these movements, your arm... All right, sorry about that. The uh, video kind of glitched out for a second there. But we're talking about the recovery, right? And what I was saying is that when we looked at the hip and we saw the uh, body moving down towards the thigh, we would assume that dragon boating is a closed chain movement. But if you look at the recovery, you're swinging your arms. I mean, well, you're moving your body, but basically your arms are free to move in the air, right? All the way back to your attack position. <clears throat> so you have to realize that the recovery portion for at least your upper extremity, okay, has to be considered an open chain movement, okay? Open chain. So what does that mean? That means that if we are looking at your shoulder or elbow joint, you know, when we're looking at the shoulder, for example, the arm is the one that's doing the moving on the scapula and everything else. And the the ona and the radius is moving on the humerus. All right. Uh, so to put that more basically, if I'm looking at the shoulder, this part of the arm is moving first. This part of the arm is moving first. And then the shoulder is kind of following along after. Okay. Now that, that's just arthrokinematically. Like that's just how the joints move. Okay. So now that you have like these pieces of the stroke together, I want you to think about this for a second, okay? Let's pretend we're just sitting down and you have a box in front of you. You're wondering, what is this box? And someone tells you, I want you to go ahead and try and move the box behind you, right? And you're clever because you just took a class about open chain and closed chain and how movement works. And you realize that, okay, I'm just going to place my arm right here on the box and push everything back, right? Basically, and bring yourself to the box. Between here and here, something happens though, right? There's a change. As you're moving your arm to the box, that is an open chain movement. Once your arm is at the box, pushing back, you're now performing a closed chain movement, all right? So once you've made contact with that box, it's your back, it's your hips, it's your arm, I mean, sorry, your shoulder that's moving the arm back, okay? So if you look at this picture then, and then come on here and look at this picture of yourself in a boat, I want you to think about this question. During your pull, is it better to use your arms first or your hips and your back. So 
if you've been paddling for a while, right? I mean, most of your coaches have probably told you and most of you could kind of figure out that, you know, bigger muscles are going to be generally activated and, and you want to use your lats. You want to use your core if you can, um, to really get the most power out of your stroke as possible. Right. But I want you to kind of take everything that you learned here and realize that as soon as you enter the water in your stroke, you're basically pushing blocks back, right? Just like this example at first, you are the water are the blocks and you are now performing a closed chain movement, right? Closed chain from between your shoulders and your arms. And at th this moment, you're completely closed. So think about this new perspective on how joints really interact when you're paddling. Because I'm sure a lot of you have heard this phrase, right? That you have to find patience in finding heavy water before you pull. And hopefully that gives you a little more insight as to why this is so important. Because if you're not patient and if you pull before you're fully buried, you're basically doing an open chain exercise, right? Kind of like what we were saying earlier, right? The water's below the blade, essentially right? And when that happens, when you're in this open chain scenario, the distal part is going to move before the proximal part. The distal part is going to move before the proximal part, which means that it's easier to cheat and pull first with your arms, right? And if you kind of start to think about it, and if you're if you really think about how you're maybe pulling half stroke or pulling before you answer the water, you can maybe think of it as a possible explanation for why some paddlers are having so much trouble and are still moving and pulling with their arm before their back or anything else. Why? Like I said at first, it's because when you don't pull heavy water, when you don't bear your blade all the way, it's an open chain movement. When your blade is buried, however, it's going to be easier to use the right muscles. You're going to have a cleaner stroke, and you you will be in a closed chain position. Right? This is the box from at first. Your blade is fully in the water. All right. Sorry, guys. Um, the video cut again. It's going to be harder um, to break at your arms first because you got that full blade in and now you're in a closed chain position where you're forced to move your hips forced to move your back all before moving your arms okay that's why it's important to find patience and in, in, um sorry that's why it's important to have patience in finding heavy water that's why you shouldn't pull with your arms first so i hope that this short little video here kind of demonstrated some of the uh arthrokinematics uh, basically how your joints move and that you open hopefully understand better um, why it's more efficient to paddle from your back and your hips than from your arms. Thanks.